what you see are dramatic displays where women are coordinated in their dress. Uh, white became a symbol of the suffrage movement. So they're borrowing from traditional iconography of womanhood. They're borrowing the notion of, of purity. They're also borrowing notions of white supremacy. They sort of work, it works on a lot of different levels. Um, so in, for instance, 1913, you see at the head of that suffrage parade um, a very well-known, young, beautiful lawyer, female lawyer who is dressed in white, in a long white, a dramatic cape, and sitting astride a pure white horse. Um, and that suffrage uh, parade is, is uh, heading past the Capitol. The first public protest to ever petition the White House to, to stand outside and demand attention in front of the White House, which is a familiar image now for uh, early 21st century Americans. This is what you do when you want attention and when you want to call uh, the powers that be um, on the carpet and you want to demand something from them. But this first one was a suffrage parade. And it was talked about. It was very controversial. Um, the women were uh, being bold. This was led by two leaders, uh, young leaders, a new generation of more what's often referred to as militant suffrage uh, women because instead of working behind the scenes and just working through contacts with powerful men, they went directly to the public um, and they also got arrested for what they uh, were doing and then staged hunger strikes in prison which also got them an enormous amount of attention. They, Lucy Barnes and Alice Paul, um, organized this particular one in, uh, on the eve of the inauguration of Woodrow Wilson, the day before the inauguration. So they were very savvy. They knew the press was in town. They knew um, people were gathered there for the next day. Um, and there was almost no one to greet the president, uh, the new, newly elected president, when he stepped off the train because everyone was downtown uh, watching the women marchers. So they were very coordinated. They were all about using the press. And that's new. The press is relatively new. So it's not a surprise that 19th century suffragists were not as, uh, as able to take advantage of them. It simply didn't exist really until the end of the 1890s. Um, but it is the first time that you really see the suffrage movement um, using that to its full advantage.